All right, all right, all right, all right. So, if you like what you see on the channel that is uplifting the name of Jesus Christ and also that is spreading the true gospel of Jesus Christ, by all means, like, comment, share, and subscribe, okay? So, my name is Amelia, and y'all, I'm in the middle of studying the word. And as I'm studying the word, and this is a Bible, um, study Bible, by the way, KJV, as I'm studying the word, a lot just comes to me, like a lot of meat and revelation, because I had to pray, y'all, and this was an unplanned video, by the way, this was a very unplanned video, normally, I don't get on Good Friday and just make a video, and yes, today's Good Friday, and I've been looking forward to Good Friday, to be honest, matter of fact, I've been looking forward to this week all week, <laughs> Good Friday, Cause if I was back in the states, y'all, I would be having a four day, but I would not be like shopping or anything like that. Now, last year I had to go buy me an emergency outfit because I was serving. I was serving, but um, yes. Um, I want to talk about purification tonight. So, if you have your Bibles, we are going to start at. Um, Leviticus 15, because there's something I want to talk about. There's something I really want to talk about. And it's about purification. Purification. And you're probably like, okay, what does purification got to do in the book of Leviticus? But we're also going to go to John 1934. So I'm going to let y'all know something. So I had to write some things down. Okay. So we all know about the laws of Moses and there are people to the stage talking about we still got to keep the laws. No, we don't got to keep the laws because I'm studying here. And guess what? There's a side note, a footnote that says as Christians today, our holiness is not judged by these kinds of laws. But it's good to remember that when we approach God through prayer or worship, we are approaching a holy God. I want you all to remember this. And I'm going to talk about... <sighs> Um, this is a message that I want y'all to remember. And it's it was really a teaching. It's really a teaching, but there's some meat and some a message in there. So yes, I'm gonna teach on this, but also I pray somebody gets it, what I'm gonna say. Because I receive revelation from it. And ladies, I ain't trying to you know, put us on the spot, but I want y'all to know something about this. I want y'all to know what our ancestors, the children of Israel, the women, had to go through. So, yes, these are the only folks I'm claiming as my ancestors. I don't know nobody that went on the um Armistead and jumped in the war and all that. I ain't claiming them folks. My history comes strictly from the Bible, okay? Comes strictly from the Bible, okay? Children of Israel, tribe of Judah, because the king of Judah, the lion of Judah, he is on his way back. And I'm anticipating and waiting for his return, okay? So let's get into it. So we're going to start at verse number 19. So it's Leviticus 15, 19. And you're probably like, why is she teaching on this? You will understand, Okay. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, this is her menstrual, y'all. This is her men her menstrual. She shall be put apart seven days and whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the even. And everything that she lies upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Now, this is about a man and woman, a woman that is going through her cycle, her menstrual. And I just, you know, I was having a talk with the Lord about this. I said, Lord, women already are going through enough spiritually. We got, we go through child labor pains. I'm talking about women that came in the world with a vagina and still got that vagina attached to them. I'm talking, yeah, child labor pains. We got the mood swings. We got the headaches. We got the cramps, the stretch marks, the cravings. Like when a woman is going through her cycle, she's going through the most spiritually 
And don't forget the water, um, the water and weight. Now that's probably my favorite part about going through it. Just I gain a little weight and be like, oh no, who this now? <laughs> but my point of the matter is this: women are ready going through the motions when it comes down to them, you know, being the creatures that God created us to be. And when I mean creatures, I'm talking about humans. Okay. We already know our assignment is to, you know, give birth also, but we got to give birth while we're wives. We can't just be out here being baby mamas and glorifying that culture. No. Or being girlfriends and just giving birth. No, we got to be mothers and wives. That's where your true purpose fall in at as well. But, you know, not all women desire children and not all, you know, women want to be married. So... <laughs> I'm talking about to the, the um, so this is actually something for the young ladies that do want to get married and all that. Wait until you're married. I will tell you that. Wait until you're married to lock the kitty cat, to unlock the kitty cat, because that's the only time you and your husband should be busting it wide open on the honeymoon night, okay? That's it. But until the meantime, click, click, lock it down. Do you hear me? Just lock it down. Right man going to come along and he's going to unlock that key. But that's not my point. So, point of the matter is this. When a woman's going through her menstrual and all, she is unclean. Now, me, when I go through, I don't want to be around nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. Because here's the thing. I go through the worst. I go through it worse, especially as a vessel of God. I go through it worse. I ain't trying to get personal with y'all, but I'm just keeping it real. I go through worse. I got the headaches coming through. I be like, and I be feeling just fine before these headaches come through. I'm like, oh, what's going on? I know I ain't. But no, it's the headaches, it's the unexpected cramping, the tightening and all that, and the mood swings, and then the unexpected cravings of gluttony. And yes, I'm going to say cravings of gluttony, because 9 to 10, I'm craving for something I don't need, and I, I just want a big thing of, and I'm like, I don't really need it. And I don't get it majority of the time, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I have to deny my flesh. So, as we see this, when a woman is going through her cycle, I said this before, to, I actually spoke to this through somebody before, one of my sisters in Christ. I was saying that when a woman is going through her cycle, that's the time for her to get to really just unleash all the uncleanness. And it really is. Because those mood swings, oof, they're not a joke. The unexpected attitudes, they, they're not a joke. And it's still a you know, baffles me as I was reading this. I said, Lord, it still bothers me that there are men that really want to be a woman, but they don't know what a real woman goes through. They don't know what a real woman goes through. They don't know what, I mean, I I came into this world as a woman. I mean, as a little girl, now I'm grown up into a being woman. You see what I'm saying? They don't know what I had to go through. <laughs> Those growing pains and then all of a sudden I'm getting cramps and, oh. Losing all the blood and whatnot. Mm -mm. But also, when you look at number, I think we um, read 21 as well. Um, and whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So this is about her and her husband, 9, 10, they having sex while she's on her thing. Now, I was talking to the Lord about this too. And I said, Lord, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to keep it real on the one, twos and the threes. I do not. Granted, I'm a wife. Granted, I'm a wife. I said, I don't want my husband to touch me in this time. I said, it's my time to really just be closer to you. That's it. I just don't, because uh -uh. I find it to be tabooish. I find it to be disgusting. And to me, it's witchcraft. It's witchcraft, because that's so nasty. Why would I want my husband to touch me while I'm going through this, this pain, this suffering? All this other stuff. And blood is, you know, being the discharge of it. So, this, you know, I, I'm going to go back to it as well because we're going to, I'm going to stop at 28 over here and then I'm going to get more into it. So, last season, if you saw the videos on IG as well as um, YouTube, 
And one thing about me, y'all, I love when I'm having intimate time with the Lord and we're just talking and I, I it's, it's just a beautiful relationship you can have with Jesus. It's just a beautiful relationship you can have with him. You can talk to him. You can just. I'm not saying say what you say to your friends, but not no, because I'm be honest. I don't really talk to my friends like this, the way I'm talking to the Lord. Heck no. Mm-mm. Because what me and the Lord have is just so intimate and very beautiful. But I'm just saying, I don't I don't want to speak with a carnal mindset where it's like impure and all that. No. I know I can go to him about anything. But I want to go to him with, you know, I want to have a lot of reverence for him. And reverence is a strong respect that you have for someone. Same with my husband, y'all. So, but anyway, I was talking to the Lord. And y'all remember last season, I took the call to rebuke and warn every city, every country about the Beyonce concert. And I was sitting here. And I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I had no clue what a mincy was. Now, I'm sorry, fellas, if you are, and there are men that watch this channel, but I, I'm be honest with real. All I know is when I'm going through it, I'm just going through and I'm unleashing the pain. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm just unleashing pain because it's painful. And it don't, oof, it, it's just painful. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just unleashing the pain. But like I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, I did not know what a Mincy was until Bishop Wooden said something about it. And when a woman is going through that, when she's going through her menstrual, and I mean, when she's going through her menstrual, the little broken pieces that come out and they sometimes stick, those are Mincy's. And I remember I, I told him tonight, I said, Lord, I said, I just thought they were just broken vessels, a broken blood vessel. I said, I didn't know the correct term for it because I did have an issue with blood. But it wasn't with my peer. Yeah, it was with my menstrual, but it had to do with something else to it. My blood platelets. So, yes, I had an issue of blood, but it wasn't for 12 years like a woman with the issue of blood. But no, I had mine. <sighs> Let me put it like this. I'm better now, but I miss eating certain foods to help, you know, build up blood. I my hemoglobin is good, which is the red blood cells, but the platelets, they they're still probably a low um count. Because granted, I will eat my fruits and veggies. I love fruits and veggies. But most importantly, and then I'm, they don't even have liver over here. And I want some liver so bad. They got chicken liver. But I want some liver liver, y'all. Some calf liver. And yes, calf liver is full and rich in iron. Yes, it's full and rich in iron. But yes, grandma had got me a, a hold on them things. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, and, I, and I'm going to be honest with y'all, as I was saying, and I want y'all to hear me out when I'm saying this. I did not know what a Mincy was. I really didn't until it was brought to my attention that Beyonce was what she said in that poem. Is that she used the Bible as a tampon. I said, first of all, that's disgusting. Because what woman will do that? And then it was like a disrespect to the woman with the issue of blood. And then plus, I didn't realize how much it just offended me. It offended me very much. I'm like, I said, Lord, you know, I hate going through it. <laughs> but I never thought to just place, you know, a piece of blood on the Bible and be like, just take it away, Lord. No, mm -mm, that's just nasty. Very nasty. Very nasty and disgusting. And I, I'm just going to be honest with y'all on the one, twos, and threes. Like I said, we don't have to keep the laws of Moses no more. No, we have to keep God's commandments. And that's it. And I will do a teaching on that. But, you know, after this, like when a woman is going through this, I want y'all to know something. When a woman is going through this, her menstrual. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of heartache because she's going to be crying. 
it probably crying before because when my I used to cry, y'all used to cry like before it, it came. So, yes. Anyway, we're going to get back to the top, okay? And whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if it be on her bed or anything whereon she sitteth, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until the even. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him. Now, I had to look up what flowers was. That's why I had this book open while I was reading the um, little Bible, too. Yes, I got a miniature Bible. It's underneath here. And y'all know I'll show y'all this one more than I show y'all this one. But anywho, as I was saying, I said, well, is this another word for her? You know, I was thinking of something else, but it had to do with, I want to say it has to do with her menses, or it has to do with, I'm going to say it has to do with her menses. It has to do with that. In other words, it's another term for this, because when I looked it up, when I looked it up, and this is where I found out something. A woman's regular menstruation, that's her cycle, will make her unclean for seven days until the period is completely over. Anything she sat on was considered unclean. And anyone who touched her or anything she had touched will be unclean. For a day requiring bathing and washing. Now I need y'all to pay attention to what I'm about to say. If the woman's husband has sex with her, he will also then he will also be unclean for seven days. Now I'm like this. I don't know what goes on in these men's mind to want to touch a woman while she's going through something like this. I just don't know. I really don't. And it baffles me. I'm like, that's just nasty and to tab you. I might write romance, y'all, but I don't write that type of romance, the nasty side of it. Mm-mm. I just don't. Mm-mm. I try to keep it PG-13 as possible, even on the wedding night. Again, the only time I'm going to uh, write about sex is if my characters are married, period. And it's going to be in a way y'all going to know they're doing the nasty. But that's about it. Up and down. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway... I just don't know why a man would want to have sex with his wife. Granted, that's his wife. And granted, he want to, you know, make love to her. But not during this time. Matter of fact, you need to be praying for your wife. You need to be covering your wife. You are your wife's cover, men. You are your husband's. Hear me out. You are your wife's cover. I married my husband because I knew this man could cover me. He covered me. He was a protector. And like I told him yesterday, I said, I don't care your age. (laughs) There's an age difference. Just one year. There's an age difference between he and I. But most importantly, I tell him, I'm like, look, I'm still submitting to you. I'm not one of them that be like, I don't submit. That's Jezebel. Uh -uh. I ain't got time for that. But um, like I said, we're going to go through also 29 as well. No, not the 29, 28, 28, 28. So then I'm going to get into the last part of what I said. And I want you to remember this because like we're talking about purification. All right. We're talking about purification. And tonight, as I was doing the study and I was talking to the Lord, I was like, hold up. Because <sighs> I'm not saying I'm going to compare this, but I want you all to hear me out. When a woman is going through this, that's her time to get rid of unclean things anyway on a spiritual level. She need to be praying. That's her time to really be fasting if you ask me. But most importantly, when and to be separate, to be separated from everything. Not have sex with her husband while she's on this thing. No. It's just time to me, it's just time for a woman to be going through this. It's only for seven days. It is only for seven days, y'all. Seven days. And I mean seven days. All right. So let me get back to what I was going to say. 
and all the bed whereon he lies shall be unclean. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she lies, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the cleanness of her separation. And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. But if she cleansed her of her issue, but if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall be I'm sorry, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. Now, let me go back to what I was saying about from 15, uh, Leviticus 15, 19 through 24. I'm going to tell you all the last part. And I want you to remember this. Write it down. Purification came through water. I'm going to say this one more time. Purification came through water. Remember, the children of Israel did not have Jesus at that moment. Yes, Jesus was there and all that, but he did not came down to the flesh yet. He did not come down to the flesh yet until it was his time to come down to the, you know, on earth as a man, and as a baby and all that, and then do what he had to do. Y'all see what I'm saying? Hear me out. Mm -mm. However, however, I want y'all to hear me out. Their purification process was with the water. Was with water. Water. Granted, we, I mean, I'm a water treatment specialist and I do purify water. And yesterday I did got to talk to like higher ups, you know, about my water systems that I have to create. One is the Ropu, the reverse osmosis uh, water purification unit. Then you got the TWIPS. Tactical water um, purification system, LWP. I ain't got no LWP, but um, yes, I have to go through, um, you know, producing water, you know, making sure the right chemicals go through, make sure it goes through the right process and all that. Water, yes. So I do create um, purification, oh, wait, we purified water for us to drink, eat, uh, yeah, drink, um, brush our teeth with, and the bays in if we got a base, okay? But that's my job in job number one. However, I'm glad I chose it. I'm so glad I chose it. I'm very glad I chose it. I'm so glad to say the purifications. I've been in it for 10 years. So, yes. Now, I'm trying to figure out where my foot got tingling to it. But, um, yes, it got tingle, tingle to it. But, anywho, I want y'all to remember this and I want y'all to hear me out. Back then, for them to get cleansed and purified, it was with water. Now, as I was sitting here and I was reading this because I had, you know, I had two more um, lessons to and I guys when I should get them in tomorrow. But I was like, Lord, should I do this video right now? Because something needs to get said. <laughs> there are too many people in the church talking about we got to still keep the laws of Moses. And I just told y'all as Christians today, our holiness is not judged by these kinds of laws. But it is good to remember that when we approach God through a prayer or worship, we are approaching a holy God. Remember, God's standard is righteousness and holiness. Okay? Period. Righteousness, holiness. Because guess what? If you try to have your cake and eat it too, we got a problem. We have an issue. We have an issue because sin is still running rampant. It is still running rampant. Still running rampant. My neck. Yeah, I kind of. Oh, not this side. Anyway, I'm about to get into it. As I was stating, Sin is still running rampant, but also back then the children of Israel had to do animal sacrifices, crop um, sacrifices, all these different type of offerings. Excuse these ghetto people, y'all, they getting on my nerves. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but they were getting on my nerves all day. But anyway, as I was stating, children of Israel had to do all, all these offerings, burnt offerings, sin offerings, peace offerings. <laughs> I mean, it, it was they were really doing works. 
And the laws of Moses had to do with the flesh. Instead of us saying, you know what, Father, I messed up. Please forgive me. Help me turn away from this sin and give me the strength to not, you know, sin again. And really have a repentant heart and mind. Then, you know, they were this is why they were still going back doing what they had to do. And, you know, they were doing because, like I said, Jesus did not come yet in the flesh for them. He did not come in the flesh yet because they were still. This is why when I said they were still doing what they were doing, because you got to think about it. They were still sinning like it was no tomorrow. Every time God delivered them, what happened? They kept slapping him in the face like, we going back to the same thing you deliver us from. And guess what? There's people like that today. Y'all can get mad because I'm saying that. I'm, I'm keeping it real. There are people like that to this day that want their cake and eat it too. Why would you still want to be bound in chains, but yet you claim you love God? Why you want to be bound in chains, but yet you claim to be a Christian? We got a problem with that. But, you know, even when a woman is going through this, she was deemed as unclean. Like I said, the woman with the issue of blood, she was deemed as unclean because she had to be separated. She was going through this, um, her blood discharge, and this has to do with her, uh, verse 25, because it was for many, it was for many years, 12 years. Uh, I should have did some math because I was mapping the other day. But that's a very, very long time. A very long time for a woman to be going through something like that. And she is, oh my goodness, she is, um, she wants to be healed. But guess what? All the money that she spent on them doctors can heal her. Only Jesus can heal her. And she, guess what? It was her faith. Her faith. A lot of times we just need some faith, y'all. We need faith. No matter where we are, no matter where we go, we just need the faith. We just need the faith. Like I said, the children of Israel, they didn't have, you know, the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. They were doing all this blood, sac uh, not blood, uh, animal sacrifice, uh, burnt offerings, sin sacrifice, all that. But the only way for them to be pure was through water. Now, this is one thing so I'm about to give y'all revelation right now because the Lord gave you revelation. As I was thinking about this tonight. And this is um, John 19, verse 34. He's Okay, so Jesus was already dead. So I want you to hear me out what I'm about to say, okay? So, yes, today's Good Friday, and we reflect on what he did. Because guess what? Let me tell y'all what happened. Matter of fact, it was already Passover. Let me tell y'all something. It was already Passover. It was already Passover. And... What happened was, during this time, when it was Passover, the great sacrificial was about to happen. What's the great sacrificial? Jesus died on Calvary for us. So that was going to happen. And what happened was, it was between Jesus and Barabbas. So during um, Passover, they was going to release two people. I mean, you know, they was going to have bring two people to the crowd. One they was going to release, and the other one they was like, okay, he about to die. So, yeah. So, what happened was, the people screamed for Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. He was a murderer. And they all like, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Come on, bring him out. And Pilate was like, hold up, y'all. Hold up. What y'all mean y'all want Barabbas? What, 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 what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't do anything wrong. I was like, no, give us Barabbas right now. I was like, it be your own folks. <laughs> And yes, it was his own people. They screamed for Barabbas. Women, they were like, give us Barabbas. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was going to go out there and probably kill some more. But point of the matter is this. Jesus did not say anything when they were screaming Barabbas. He just stood there like, okay. All right. All right. I, I, I'm going to take this. But also, at the same time, when he was on the cross, he told God, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they have done. But I could imagine Jesus being right there with Barabbas. While, you know, the crowd is chanting for Barabbas. They're just chanting for Barabbas. And even Pilate at that time was like, hold up, y'all. Y'all trying to kill an innocent man. He did nothing wrong. He didn't do anything evil. But guess what? Think about it. 
if Barabbas had went to Calvary instead, we all would be doomed for hell. Because y'all got to think about that. Barabbas was already a sinner enough. He was already a sinner enough. So yes. And I could just imagine while Jesus is hearing the people scream for Barabbas. He's looking at Barabbas like, you know what? I'm going to carry what you doing. I'm going to carry that on the cross. I got it. I can just picture that. Like I said, excuse me, folks outside. And I could just imagine that. I mean, my not, I mean, we don't know if he would look at Barabbas or not, but I could just imagine him looking at Barabbas and be like, look, go on, be free. I'm carrying what you're doing, your sin. I'm carrying that up there. I got it. I'm about to pay the price for it. And like I told the people at my church last year when I went up there and I gave them a word. Yes, I gave them a word last year, a word of encouragement. I said, you don't need a holiday to remember. There's a difference between a holiday and a holy day. You don't need a holiday because a lot of people still say Easter, especially church folks. You don't need a holiday to remember what Christ did. I said, you need to remember that every day. Because it could have been the other way. 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 So we need to acknowledge him. Not when it's just Good Friday. Not when it's. I I, I don't want to say suspect Saturday. Because you know anything can happen. In three days. And then on Resurrection Sunday. We know that he's risen. We need to think about that. When church is over with, we need to think about that. When well, I ain't gonna call the building the church. We need to think about that when the doors that everyone think is church are closed. We need to think about that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday. Because guess what? Saturday is the Sabbath. But guess what? You should be keeping every day holy. Live holy every day. We used to do a benediction at a church I used to go to. And the pastor used to say, I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, live holy each and every day. Go in peace and sin no more. Yep, I remember that. Watch, pray, live holy every day. We need to be doing that, y'all. Watch, pray, and live in holy every day. Not just on Sunday. Not just when. Let me tell y'all something. Sunday worshiping, y'all going to get mad at me because I'm saying this, but it's the truth. And I shared this on Facebook. I'm taking a break from Facebook, a long break for a while. But anyway, I shared this on Facebook about the mark of the beast. And it's not a chip. It's not a vaccine. It's not Social Security. No, it ain't all that. Y'all scared about a little chip. No, that's not what that means. Guess what it has to do with worship. Because guess what? Sunday worship, that's actually false. You should be worshiping God each and every day. Each and every day. You should be honoring him with your body. Especially if you're single. You should be honoring him with the food you eat. Because guess what? That your body is the temple of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord dwelleth therein. You should be honoring him with the words that come out of your mouth and how you react to certain things. Because I'm going to tell you something. Not every action deserves a reaction. Y'all get mad to call me and just, uh, you know, get mad. But I'm I'm just going to keep it real on the one, twos, and threes. (sighs) I ain't finished yet. But I want y'all just to see this. But, you know, I was it, it was Passion of the Christ I saw one year. My senior year, I saw Passion of the Christ. And when I watched it, it did something to me. I'm not going to lie, it did. It did something to me. It did something to me when I watched it. It's just, I mean, even now, I mean, I don't have to watch a movie that Hollywood made. To know what my Lord and Savior did. All I got to do is pick up the word. A lot of times we got to just pick up the word. The word ain't going to lie. That's the only word. And I got my other Bible right here too. So I got all three with me. 
the word is not going to lie. Too many people, especially church folks, are prophecy hungry, are prosperity hungry, false doctrine hungry. Instead of being hungry for the truth and righteousness and holiness, because guess what? I crave for that. I want Jesus of the Bible. I don't want this false narrative of Jesus tolerating sin because guess what? If he tolerated sin, he would not have completed the assignment to go on Calvary and die in my place. Because we all deserve a burning, um, you know, we all deserve the eternal damnation. But guess what? It took a man to come in the flesh. Well, it took our Lord and Savior to come in the flesh and be like, not only am I here to fulfill the law, but I'm about to do the ultimate sacrificial. And it was on Passover. Because what was Passover? Passover at that time was when they had it to the lamb without blemish and put the blood on the door to be saved from that angel that was going to smite all the firstborn. But it took our Lord and Savior to do to do the ultimate sacrifice. To do the ultimate sacrifice. I ain't done because that bell going off. But we're going to get into it. All right. I want y'all to see something. And when this came to me. I was like oh my goodness. This right here. This right here is me. So I want y'all to read this with me. Um, John 19.34. So yes. I kind of just sum, summarize what happened. And then plus. I really hate when Pete denied Jesus. Y'all. But Pete was about to turn up on them folks. <laughs> Pete was having a bad day. But, you know, you got to think about it. Pete went with him. But Pete denied him too. Like, I don't know this man. Mm-mm. I don't know him. What y'all talking about? I don't know him. That one little young girl just accused him. Mm-hmm. That's the one that was following Jesus. And he's like, I don't know who y'all talking Like, he was about to turn up on everybody. He was. Now, I, I ain't going to lie to y'all. That is one of my favorite passages to read. But then again, it's like sad. I'm like, ooh, wow. Just wow. He wept. He wept. But there was only one disciple that was at the cross, and that was John. John was the loving disciple. And yes. And John made, John was the only one. The only one. That to me wrote like most of the books in the New Testament. Well, no, he didn't write most of them because Paul wrote 13. John wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And then he wrote Revelation. So he wrote five books. But anyway, we're going to get to um, the part where, you know, Jesus already gave up the ghost. When he said it's finished. I will always say that's like one of my favorite quotes from Jesus. It is finished. Like he came. He even said it in the book of Revelation. It's finished. And you know what makes me mad? People in the church ain't reading no Revelation. I don't know what y'all scared of. I can read Revelation like it's a new book that's out. And still get the knowledge and still get the revelation that is needed and still get conviction. By the way, y'all, the ones that are prophecy hungry, y'all might want to read Revelation because that's that book is full of prophecy. It is full of prophecy. So you might want to read it. Y'all too busy being prophecy hungry. Y'all might want to read that. But anyway, let's read this part. John. 1934. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood. I had to underline it for a reason blood and water. Now, there's a song that Donnie McClurkin made. And we I used to sing it as a child when I used to go to my grandma church. And yes, the charismatic church. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Because I did used to do, um, I used to sing for the pastor at, um, for the um, church anniversary. Me, my brother, we used to do the um, youth choir and all that. 
I don't know who got that demonic laugh out there, but ooh, Satan, the Lord rebukes you for the way they laughing. Ooh, but anywho, like I was saying, I used to sing this song by Donna McClurkin, and I know y'all know it. it. It goes like, I got my mind made up, and I'm and I won't turn back because I'm going to see my Jesus someday. We used to always sing that song. But there's a part in that song that says, pour out the water, spirit and the blood. Gotta think about it. When he, you gotta think about it, because I'm about to give y'all some meat right here. And I ain't talking about no ribs, I ain't talking about no chicken, I ain't talking about no hamburgers, no hot dogs. I'm talking about spiritual meat. I want y'all to see this. Go back to where I just came from. And I told y'all purification came through water, right? Well, guess what? When that soldier pierced his side, not only did water came out, but blood came out. So guess what this lets me know? Oh, Lord, please don't let your daughter cry because I feel these tears about to come. Please don't let me cry. Please don't let me cry while I'm doing this. Please don't let me cry. Please don't let me cry. Please don't let me cry while I'm doing this. Please do not let me cry. And normally I don't get like this, y'all, but this is good news. This is good news because how many people are still going to these buildings and they're not getting the true good news? They're getting a false hope. They're getting fa- they're getting lies fed. They're getting deception um, fed to them. They are getting this manipulation, witchcraft, all this stuff that's being read to them and fed to them. All because they want to be rich. All because they want to drive a fancy car. All because they want a big house. Why y'all ain't storing up treasures in heaven? Why y'all ain't doing that? Why y'all can't do that? I, I want to know that. Because guess what? If you store up treasures in heaven, you ain't got to worry about somebody robbing you. You ain't got to worry about, you know, something turning to rust. You ain't even got to worry about your house catching on fire. Because guess what? Mm-mm. I don't know about y'all, but I want to hear well done that good and faithful servant. Do you hear me? Because I'm going to tell y'all something. Hell is still hot. It is still hot. I'm going to say this one more time. It is still hot. How many of y'all are going to these churches and they're still telling y'all this? Because guess what? Jesus taught more on hell than he did heaven. Because you know why? He didn't want nobody in their grandma going there. He didn't. And these you and this is why I you know, this is why I took the call, even though I was running from it. I can I, I, I love young people. I love young people. But it was so many young people back in 2020. So many young people talking about, I'd rather just go to hell. It's going to be a party and all that. No, don't let Hollywood give you this deception that hell is a party. The Bible says there is weeping, moaning, and gnashing of teeth. And I was just thinking about this today while I was at work. Not thinking that I was going to give a, you know, come on here and do this. Because guess what? Next month, I was actually going to be getting back into doing the words. And I was like, why should I do this now? Because I am taking a break. And if y'all hear something just... Kind of crumbling. I'm scratching my back. <sighs> but no. There is nothing peaceful down there. You can't eat down there. You can't drink down there. You are in torment. You hearing the screams of people wishing they had repent. And if you want a prophecy word, guess what? Repent is a prophecy word. Repent. You don't know what's going to happen this year. You need to repent. And there are times when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. I'll be like, Lord, not only do I love you, but I'm taking this in. Because I ain't going to lie. I've been feeling, I've been fighting lately, spiritually. When I took this break, it was like, okay, she's taking a break. Battle time. Because guess what? I'm dealing with something. I ain't going to get too personal about it, but I'm dealing with something. I even told my husband about it. I said, husband, I'm dealing with something. And I, I, I'm dealing with it. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all are dealing with something. Go to the following people. If you're married, go to your husband or go to your wife. Men, go to your wives. 
Wives, go to your husbands. But also, y'all need to go to the Lord together. Y'all need to go to your mama. Y'all need to go to grandma. Y'all need to go to auntie. Y'all need to go to your sister, your brother. Because guess what? Folks, like, and your best friend, your so-called best friend. Folks like to run their mouths. And that's how some of y'all don't even know how to shut up. I'm going to be honest. Don't even know how to shut up. Because you want everybody and their grandma to know your business. But as soon as someone approaches you that you don't know, be like, hold up, how you know this? Well, I heard this from such and such. Do you know such and such? Yeah, such and such is my cousin. You need to shut up because such and such, that is your cousin, might not got good intentions for you. My mouth's dry. Well, that's something telling the truth. But anyway, let me get into it, y'all. What I'm about to say, because I, I had to fight, the, <laughs> fight being emotional, y'all. Because it's not about me being emotional. It's about me winning souls for Christ. And leading, well, it's about leading souls to Christ. It's not about me. It's about leading souls to Christ, winning souls for Christ, because guess what? I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save his or her soul. That's it. Period. That's the song, too. The Williams Brothers, they made that song. And then they remixed it. <laughs> Young folks like remix. But anyway, we're going to go back to that verse again. And then after that, I'm going to close it out. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Because guess what? Then Jesus came to fulfill the law of Moses. Because back then they had to use purification, right? Am I right? Am I right? Purification at that time was for water. But guess what? Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice, the greatest love that any man has ever done for me. Has ever, I tell them that I think you're the only one that really loved me. I tell them that I tell them that all the time. I'm like, you're the only one that really loved me, so that's why I'm so hungry for you. <laughs> I tell them that because I be hungry for his presence. I be hungry just to hear the word and to get into the word. Period. I don't want nothing else. I even told him that day. I said, Lord, I, I was having communion tonight. I said, Lord, I don't want nothing else. <sighs> Really, I really just don't want nothing else but you. And it's a feel, and let me tell you something. That's the best thing you can ever do is just fall in love with Jesus. He'll never leave you astray. He'll never um, disappoint you. Because I really, I even told him last night, I said, Lord, you're doing something that, I said, you're doing something. But, you know, even though I don't understand it, I'm, I'm yeah. And it ain't got nothing to do with something personal, but. I'm going to be honest, normally when I'm doing something for the job, like yesterday was the expo for, you know, my water equipment and whatnot, and it was raining. I ain't going to lie to y'all, it was raining. It rained today, but we had a little bit of air pollution quality that was coming through. I, I wore a mask, I ain't going to lie, but I did profess to one of my soldiers, I said, I do got the Holy Spirit. I said, this mask ain't going to protect me. I said, the Holy Spirit... Is who I got. So I know that's who I have that's going to protect me. So. Something else I was going to tell y'all. So anyway. Wednesday. You know we're out there. We're getting everything set up. And. All I know is. When everything comes down. For one of the equipments. I'm an expert in. Not only am I kind of helping, but I actually was directing. And I was not cussing. I was not screaming. I was not yelling at the soldiers. I was like, and then I realized in a way I kind of did it yesterday. I was like, <sighs> when we were packing up, because I gave them an idea. And it was like, well, we're waiting on such and such. I said, hold up. I said, y'all don't see what's available right here. I said, put the tank that's on, put the tank on the little um skid and lift up the um tarp and get all that water out. Because I don't need my tanks being, you know, filled with water and then it becomes all moldy and mildew like. And then I said, dang, I need to start thinking more outside the box. And it's not just for the job, but you got to think about it. The Lord's ways are not our ways. So when he says something that's not going to make sense to me, I might as well. I even told him. 
I said, Lord, you tell me something and you tell me to do something and I'll, you know, it might not, you know, make sense to me. I said, I'll do it. And then last night I said, Lord, you're doing something. You're doing something. Because I did not even question him. I just said, you're doing something. I acknowledge what he's doing. It's a growth that he's doing in me. And I already told him. I didn't know it was going to happen. Like, what's the job? Am I trying to get a raise and all that? Nope. That's not what That's not what it means. Sometimes, what, what the Lord really wants me to do, get out of this comfort zone. I'm, kind, I'm very reserved. I'm very, I don't let everybody near me. But when it comes time to being a leader, you got to step outside the box and you got to think things through. Because there's a lot of things I just don't understand sometimes that, like, I don't bow down to the army and all that. Nope. Half the time, I don't want to be at work. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Half the time, I just don't want to be at work. I want to be inside the praying closet. I want to be in the presence of my Lord and Savior. That's who I want more than anything. And then after that, I write. That's about it. That's a, that's why was, the Lord knows that. But anyway, like I was saying, let me get back on touch. Like I told y'all, when Jesus died on Calvary, he not only came to be the greatest sacrificial lamb for us, but he also came to fulfill the law of Moses. Do y'all remember what I told y'all? Water was their way of purifying themselves. But guess what? This lets me know to this day there is still power in the blood. And then the water is the living water. And guess what? There are people just drinking from this living water on occasions instead of being thirsty for this living water. And then guess what? There, like I said, there's power in the blood. The power, and when we talk about being baptized, you got to think about it. It's a spiritual thing. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Another revelation. Another revelation. Because they're not telling y'all about this type of purification, that it's spiritual. The blood, the water, and then the spirit. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Baptized in the name of Jesus. Because that's where you're going to get the Holy Spirit. The blood is going to be covering you. And you get to drink the fountain of living water. Daily. 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 Pour out the water, spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. That's what that song used to sing. That's the part in that song. Pour out the water, spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. They don't make songs like this no more. Everybody got to feel like they, oh, I'm going to get into that, God's willing, about this little guy's um, doctrine that is out. Because I'm going to tell you something. I ain't no God. I'm not. I'm just a sinner that is redeemed by grace. I'm just a sinner that's redeemed by grace. I know who I am. I, have, I used to ask the Lord all the time. I still ask him, like, why me? Why'd you choose me? I thought you know what I did this. I, I did that. I definitely did this. I said out of all the people in their grandma, who why me? I never told I never said that, but I just say why me? Why me? Who am I? Who am I? A lot of y'all don't even ask who am I. Y'all probably just listen to um Peter Pablo because he said who am I? Did he say his name? And I don't listen to that song no more, so mm -mm. But I want y'all to remember this. And then like I said, I'm about to look, there's still power in the blood. There's still power in the blood of Jesus to wash away our sins. There's, there's a song that says, who can wash away my sins? Who can make me whole? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, please don't let your daughter cry. Please don't let her cry. Cause I, mm -mm. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's still power in the blood. There's still power in his name. And people are worshiping the wrong Jesus. Hopefully, the Lord will let me do a teaching on the Antichrist. I want to do a teaching called the Antichrist versus, well, Christ versus the Antichrist. I'm going to tell you why. We're going to, you know, do a little teaching with that. 
And reason why I'm going to do a teaching with that because I'm going to examine the two and let y'all know that there's a lot of people proclaiming Christ, but it ain't the Christ that I'm be talking to or the Christ that I'm reading about, the Christ that I know because I'm telling y'all something. Monday, if you if you know, after um Palm was it Palm Sunday, Monday what happened? Jesus went to the temple. Guess what? He was already mad at them folks. They were selling up in the house of the temple. And what he did? He turned over them tables. I should have read that. But no. I, I stuck with my teachers and all that. And then I was like, oh. I said, I've been thought Jesus did that ahead of time. Not, you know. And a lot of times people, people want to say, well, Jesus got angry. Well, yes, he got angry. But it was a righteous angry. It was a righteous anger. Because guess what? You're not supposed to be selling in the place that you're calling church. If you want to collect the money, collect it to pay, you know, somebody's unexpected medical bills. Collect them when somebody's losing their house. Collect it when somebody is about to get invented or somebody's car is about to get towed. That's what that money should be for. Not for y'all's pastor. He rolling up the church with a Mercedes. He got a 10 square foot mansion on the other side of the hill. And you wonder where your money going to. And you wonder why you ain't seeing no blessings. Because he's telling you these lies. Just so you can fund him. Instead of funding your household. Yeah, I better get some discernment up in here. And one thing I will say. And after this, I will make an announcement. Um, I will make a put up a short about something. And yeah, I will know. Cause, but yeah. But anywho. There's still power in the blood. This is what I want y'all to see. There was parallel right there. I don't care. There was spiritual meat right there. But the children of Israel had to go through purification with water. We ain't got to go through that no more. Do y'all see me? Did y'all hear me? We ain't got to go through that. And we, it, let me tell you something. There is still power in the blood of Jesus. There is still power in the blood of Jesus. And guess what? There's still power today. Y'all need to repent. Y'all need to come to Jesus more than you go into your fav- your faves, more than you go on your phone, more than you go into your mama, your grandma, your auntie, more than you go into people. You need to go to the one that's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Because I go to him more, like I told um, my sister in Christ, I said, look, when work is over with, I want to be in that closet. I said, bump work, because I found out some things that's going on with work. That I ain't too pleasant with. But yet people have deemed me as the problem because I minister to somebody. And sometimes my motherly ways can, I'm like, you know what? I'm not trying to be a Jezebel. That's one thing. I'm not trying to be a Jezebel. But a lot of people are like, you know, they, they see me as a problem. But I'm like this. If I was a Jezebel... I would not be doing this. This is why it's important. If you call yourself a prophet, prophetess, a minister, a teacher, an evangelist, a preacher, a reverend, a bishop, whatever title you want, an apostle, whatever uh, uh, title you desire, you need to be at the feet of Jesus each and every day. You are going through spiritual warfare. Because guess what? Satan does not care if you're praying and reading the Bible. He, he's going to, because guess what? He got you if you're not living by it. He's going to fight you if you are living by it. Because if he ain't finding you, then technically what you're doing is in vain. That's why you have to have on full armor each and every day. You can't just pick two days out of seven days just to honor God. You need to be honoring him all seven days of the week. All seven days. All seven days of the week. Of the week. So I hope this blessed somebody. I really do. Because let me tell y'all something. Good Friday. And a lot of people, they do this. They see, especially if their children are going to school or the church is doing something. Because a lot of these churches don't really know that Easter is a pagan holiday. 
I say Resurrection Sunday. I don't do Easter. Uh-uh. I don't, I don't do Easter. If it ain't Resurrection Sunday, I don't want to party in it. I mean, granted, I still get dressed up, but that's about it. But, you know, this this past Sunday, no, this last week, this past week, I thought about going to church. But until I found out about the whole Mark of the Beast thing, I was like, uh, maybe I shouldn't go. Because, you know what, I don't want to be, uh-uh. But if I do go, I'm going to go up there and let them know, hey, you need to be honoring God each and every day. You need to be keeping his commandments each and every day. Because I bet you not everybody and their grandma that goes to church is saved. I'm talking about going to church every Sunday. Thinking that a perfect church attendance is what's going to get them inside the kingdom. And I, you know, I want to ask, ask this. I ain't trying to, you know, get as, you know, I am not trying to um, stop people from going to church. But I have a question. If you are, do you ever get tired of going? Do you ever get tired of going? And the reason why I'm asking this, especially the ones that go every Sunday. Like, granted for me, when I used to go, I was tired of going. I'm going to tell you why. I heard the same thing. I heard nothing about getting in a true and authentic relationship with Christ. Are they teaching y'all what y'all need to do to be saved? And are they teaching y'all how to live a holy life? Because if you're going there just to hear what your tickling ears want to hear, we got a problem. We got some problem. Like I said, I'm not stopping people from going to church. But I'm just saying, are you getting fed proper doctrine? Because if you ain't getting fed proper doctrine, we got a problem. And I, I, I'm just saying, don't feed your soul with something that's going to lead you to hell. No. I ain't talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. If you just go in there so you're going to hear a prosperity message, a motivational speech. This is why I don't do motivational speeches. I just can't. Mm-mm. Because I don't need to get a hold to that and be like, okay, I'm tuning this out. This is, okay, when 2100 comes, that's 9 o'clock. When 9 o'clock comes, then that means for me to get into, you know, the motivational side instead of me getting into my word. I need to get into that word because guess what? Not only does this word encourages me, but it convicts me. It transforms me. It is still alive. And yes, some of the stories I do love. Some of the passages I do love. Some of the, um, you know what? That's why I take this to work with me. I take it to work with me. By the day, I had to stop and I bowed my head while I was... Because my sister in Christ was praying. I bowed my head today while she was praying. I was, I was waiting on somebody and their grandma to come and ask me, what were you doing? I'm like, first of all, she's praying. I am not just going to keep walking. And she's praying. And no, I was not doing that to honor her. It's just to the fact I wanted my light to shine. I was showing people, hey, I'm not ashamed of Christ. Whether I'm on this job or not. That's why a lot of people don't really like me. Because I'm in a way loud for Christ. And where I stand on. And a lot of people really don't like me. Because I enforce the standards. And I rather enforce standards. And discipline. Now I don't agree with a lot of the army programs. And this is why I will not do certain things. When it comes down to being in that leadership role. to Like for certain army programs. Like. E equal opportunity because that really is a protective program for LGBT and all that. And I do speak out against um, the spirit of homosexuality and all that. So, yes, I'm just going to keep it real. And this is why I don't really hang out with nobody either because there are some people over here that do practice it. But I just don't hang out with everybody and their grandma. Mm -mm. But, you know, there's other you know spirits and all that, too. So, yeah, yeah. But if you are someone, you know, that does not have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you want to make him your personal Lord and Savior, do it now while you have a chance. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next week. Don't wait until next year. Don't wait until, uh, that's it. Okay, don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until next year. Don't wait until next week or next month. You do not know what tomorrow will bring. 
it is time, and I mean it is time to make a choice and to be on the winning side. Do you hear me? It's time to be on the winning side. I'm going to say it one more time. It's time to be on the winning side. I'm going to say it one more time. It is time to be on the winning side. I'm going to say it one more time. Be on the winning side because guess what? Say the side might look like they win, but in the end, they're going to lose, okay? They're going to lose. So, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I can be a little fanatic, but I would rather tell the truth. And I don't have to do prompts. I don't have to do anything theatric. I don't have to be charismatic. No, sometimes I will throw a little humor in and there, but at the same time, I'd rather tell y'all the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. If you're going to a transformation church where um, Michael Todd teaches, you're just going there to get a motivational speech. He rarely teaches from the word. And then on top of that, it's always some theatrical trick he got to do. I ain't got to do anything theatrical to keep, because guess what? This channel has already grown to 100 and we're almost at 140 souls that have subscribed to the channel and i just want to thank god for that because at the end of the day it's all about god that is in control of this and like i said i'd rather tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth do you hear me okay but i am gonna make up an announcement for y'all and i hope you all enjoyed it and be blessed because y'all know y'all already know what time it is Y'all already know what time it is. So I highly even encourage y'all, even after Resurrection Sunday, get closer to Christ. Get closer to Christ. This is what I'm going to say and this is where I'm going to end it at. So may God continue to keep you all. May he bless you all. Be blessed. <laughs>